Charlotte Bronte, Charlotte Bronte, April 21, 1816, March 31, 1855, was an English novelist and poet, the eldest of the three Bronte sisters who survived into adulthood and both novels became classics of English literature. She enlisted in school at Roe Head in January 1831, aged 14 years. She left the year after to teach her sisters, Emily and Anne, at home, returning in 1835 as a governess. In 1839 she undertook the role as governess for the Sidgwick family, but left after a few months to return to Haworth where the sisters opened at a school, but failed to attract pupils. Instead they turned to writing and they each first published in 1846 under the pseudonyms of Currer, Alice, and Acton Bell. Her first novel The Professor was rejected by publishers, her second novel Jane Eyre was published in 1847. The sisters admitted to their Bell pseudonyms in 1848 and by the following year were celebrated in London literary circles. Bronte experienced the early deaths of all her siblings. She became pregnant shortly after her marriage in June 1854 but died on March 31, 1855 of tuberculosis or possibly typhus. Charlotte Bronte was born on April 21, 1816 in Market Street Thornton, west of Bradford in the West Riding of Yorkshire, the third of the six children of Maria Nay Branwell, and Patrick Bronte, formerly surnamed Bronte an Irish Anglican clergyman. In 1820 her family moved a few miles to the village of Haworth, where her father had been appointed perpetual curate of St. Michael in All Angels Church. Maria died of cancer on September 15, 1821, leaving five daughters, Maria, Elizabeth, Charlotte, Emily, and Anne, and a son, Branwell, to be taken care of by her sister, Elizabeth Branwell. In August 1824 Patrick sent Charlotte, Emily, Maria and Elizabeth to the clergy daughter's school at Cowan Bridge in Lancashire. Charlotte maintained that the school's poor conditions permanently affected her health and physical development, and hastened the deaths of Maria, born 1814, and Elizabeth, born 1815, who both died of tuberculosis in June 1825. After the deaths of his older daughters, Patrick removed Charlotte and Emily from the school. Charlotte used the school as the basis for Lowood School in Jane Eyre. At home in Haworth Parsonage, Bronte acted as the motherly friend and guardian of her younger sisters. Bronte wrote her first known poem at the age of 13 in 1829, and was to go on to write more than 200 poems in the course of her life. Many of her poems were published in their homemade magazine Branwell's Blackwoods Magazine, and concerned the fictional Glasstown Confederacy. She and her surviving siblings, Branwell, Emily and Anne created their own fictional worlds, and began chronicling the lives and struggles of the inhabitants of their imaginary kingdoms. Charlotte and Branwell wrote Byronic stories about their jointly imagined country, Angria, and Emily and Anne wrote articles and poems about Gondel. The sagas they created were episodic and elaborate, and they exist in incomplete manuscripts, some of which had been published as juvenilia. They provided them with an obsessive interest during childhood and early adolescence which prepared them for literary vocations in adulthood. Between 1831 and 1832, Bronte continued her education at Roe Head in Mirfield, where she met her lifelong friends and correspondents Ellen Nussie and Mary Taylor. In 1833 she wrote a novella, The Green Dwarf, using the name Wellesley. Around about 1833, her stories shifted from tales of the supernatural to more realistic stories. She returned to Roe Head as a teacher from 1835 to 1838. Unhappy and lonely as a teacher at Roe Head, Bronte took out her sorrows in poetry, writing a series of melancholic poems. In We Wove a Web in Childhood written in December 1835, Bronte drew a sharp contrast between her miserable life as a teacher and the vivid imaginary world she and her siblings had created. In another poem Morning was its freshness still written at the same time, Bronte wrote his bitter sometimes to recall slash illusions once deemed fair. Many of her poems concern the imaginary world of Angria often concerning Byronic arrows, and in December 1836 she wrote to the poet laureate Robert Salvi asking him for encouragement of her career as a poet. Salvi wrote back to say she was a bad poet and to consider another career, a letter that greatly hurt her. One scholar Don Potter wrote that Bronte had a streak of sadism in her novels with her characters always suffering in some way, which she suggested was due to her own unhappy life. In 1839 she took up the first of many positions as governess to families in Yorkshire, a career she pursued until 1841. In particular, from May to July 1839, she was employed by the Sidgwick family at their summer residence, Stone Gap, in Lothersdale, where one of her charges was John Benson Sidgwick, 
1835-1927, an unruly child who on one occasion threw a Bible at Charlotte, an incident that may have been the inspiration for a part of the opening chapter of Jane Eyre in which John Reed throws a book at the young Jane. Bronte did not enjoy her work as a governess, noting her employers treated her almost as a slave, constantly humiliating her. Bronte was of slight build and was less than five feet tall. In 1842 Charlotte and Emily traveled to Brussels to enroll at the boarding school run by Constantine Haga, 1809-1896, and his wife Claire Zoe Parent Haga 1804-1887. During her time in Brussels, Bronte, who favored the Protestant ideal of an individual in direct contact with God, objected to the stern Catholicism of Madame Haga which she considered a tyrannical religion that enforced conformity and submission to the Pope. In return for board and tuition Charlotte taught English and Emily taught music. Their time at the school was cut short when their aunt Elizabeth Branwell, who had joined the family in Haworth to look after the children after their mother's death, died of internal obstruction in October 1842. Charlotte returned alone to Brussels in January 1843 to take up a teaching post at the school. Her second stay was not happy. She was homesick and deeply attached to Constantine Haga. She returned to Haworth in January 1844 and used the time spent in Brussels as the inspiration for some of the events in the Professor and Villa. In May 1846 Charlotte, Emily, and Anne self-financed the publication of a joint collection of poems under their assumed names Currer, Alice, and Acton Bell. The pseudonyms bailed the sisters' sex while preserving their initials, thus Charlotte was Currer Bell. Bell was the middle name of Haworth's curate. Arthur Bell Nichols whom Charlotte later married, and Currer was the surname of Francis Mary Richardson Currer who had funded their school, and maybe their father. Of the decision to use noms de plume, Charlotte wrote. Although only two copies of the collection of poems were sold, the sisters continued writing for publication and began their first novels, continuing to use their noms de plume when sending manuscripts to potential publishers. Bronte's first manuscript, The Professor did not secure a publisher, although she was heartened by an encouraging response from Smith, Elder and Company of Cornhill, who expressed an interest in any longer works Currer Bell might wish to send. Bronte responded by finishing and sending a second manuscript in August 1847. Six weeks later, Jane Eyre was published. It tells the story of a plain governess, Jane, who, after difficulties in her early life, falls in love with her employer, Mr. Rochester. They marry but only after Rochester's insane first wife, of whom Jane initially has no knowledge, dies in a dramatic house fire. The book's style was innovative, combining naturalism with gothic melodrama, and broke new ground in being written from an intensely evoked first-person female perspective. Bronte believed art was most convincing when based on personal experience, in Jane Eyre she transformed the experience into a novel with universal appeal. Jane Eyre had immediate commercial success and initially received favorable reviews. G. H. Lewis wrote that it was an utterance from the depths of a struggling, suffering, much enduring spirit, and declared that it consisted of suspiria de profundis. Sighs from the depths. Speculation about the identity and gender of the mysterious Currer Bell heightened with the publication of Wuthering Heights by Alice Bell, Emily, and Agnes Gray by Acton Bell, Anne. Accompanying the speculation was a change in the critical reaction to Bronte's work, as accusations were made that the writing was coarse a judgment more readily made once it was suspected that Currer Bell was a woman. However, sales of Jane Eyre continued to be strong and may even have increased as a result of the novel developing a reputation as an improper book. A talented amateur artist, Bronte personally did the drawings for the second edition of Jane Eyre and in the summer of 1834 two of her paintings were shown at an exhibition by the Royal Northern Society for the Encouragement of the Fine Arts in Leeds. In 1848 Bronte began work on the manuscript of her second novel, Shirley. It was only partially completed when the Bronte family suffered the deaths of three of its members within eight months. In September 1848 Branwell died of chronic bronchitis and marasmus, exacerbated by heavy drinking, although Bronte believed that his death was due to tuberculosis. Branwell may have had a laudanum addiction. Emily became seriously ill shortly after his funeral and died of pulmonary tuberculosis in December 1848, and died of the same disease in May 1849. Bronte was unable to write at this time. After Anne's death Bronte resumed writing as a way of dealing with her grief, and Shirley, which deals with themes of industrial unrest and the role of women in society, was published in October 1849. Unlike Jane Eyre, which is written in the first person, 
Shirley is written in the third person and lacks the emotional immediacy of her first novel, and reviewers found it less shocking. Bronte, as her late sister's heir, suppressed the republication of Anne's second novel, The Tenant of Wildfell Hall, an action which had a deleterious effect on Anne's popularity as a novelist and has remained controversial among the sister's biographers ever since. In view of the success of her novels, particularly Jane Eyre, Bronte was persuaded by her publisher to make occasional visits to London, where she revealed her true identity and began to move in more exalted social circles, becoming friends with Harriet Martineau and Elizabeth Gaskell, and acquainted with William Makepeace Thackeray and G. H. Lewis. She never left Howarth for more than a few weeks at a time, as she did not want to leave her aging father. Thackeray's daughter, writer Anne Isabella Thackeray Ritchie, recalled a visit to her father by Bronte. Bronte's friendship with Elizabeth Gaskell while not particularly close, was significant in that Gaskell wrote the first biography of Bronte after her death in 1855. Bronte's third novel, the last published in her lifetime, was Villette, which appeared in 1853. Its main themes include isolation, how such a condition can be born, and the internal conflict brought about by social repression of individual desire. Its main character, Lucy Snow, travels abroad to teach in a boarding school in the fictional town of Villette where she encounters a culture and religion different from her own, and falls in love with a man, Paul Emanuel, whom she cannot marry. Her experiences result in a breakdown but eventually she achieves independence and fulfillment through running her own school. A substantial amount of the novel's dialogue is in the French language. Villette marked Bronnie's return to writing from a first-person perspective, that of Lucy Snow, the technique she had used in Jane Eyre. Another similarity to Jane Eyre lies in the use of aspects of her own life as inspiration for fictional events, in particular her reworking of the time she spent at the Pensana in Brussels. Villette was acknowledged by critics of the day as a potent and sophisticated piece of writing although it was criticized for coarseness and for not being suitably feminine in its portrayal of Lucy's desires. Before the publication of Villette, Bronte received an expected proposal of marriage from Arthur Bell Nichols, her father's curate, who had long been in love with her. She initially turned down his proposal and her father objected to the union at least partly because of Nichols's poor financial status. Elizabeth Gaskell, who believed that marriage provided clear and defined duties that were beneficial for a woman, encouraged Bronte to consider the positive aspects of such a union and try to use her contacts to engineer an improvement in Nichols's finances. Bronte meanwhile was increasingly attracted to Nichols and by January 1854 she had accepted his proposal. They gained the approval of her father by April and married in June. Her father Patrick had intended to give Charlotte away, but at the last minute decided he could not, and Charlotte had to make her way to the church without them. The married couple took their honeymoon in Bonaher, County Offaly, Ireland. By all accounts, her marriage was a success and Bronte found herself very happy in a way that was new to her. Bronte became pregnant soon after her wedding, but her health declined rapidly and, according to Gaskell, she was attacked by sensations of perpetual nausea and ever-recurring faintness. She died, with her unborn child, on March 31, 1855, three weeks before her 39th birthday. Her death certificate gives the cause of death as tuberculosis, but biographers including Claire Harmon suggest that she died from dehydration and malnourishment due to vomiting caused by severe morning sickness or hyperemesis gravidarum. There is also evidence that she died from typhus, which she may have caught from Tabitha Ackroyd the Bronte household's oldest servant, who died shortly before her. Charlotte Bronte was buried in the family vault in the church of S.T. Michael and All Angels at Howarth. The Professor, the first novel Bronte had written, was published posthumously in 1857. The fragment of a new novel she had been writing in her last year has been twice completed by recent authors, the more famous version being Emma Brown, a novel from the unfinished manuscript by Charlotte Bronte by Claire Boylan in 2003. Most of her writings about the imaginary country Angria have also been published since her death. In 2018, the New York Times published a belated obituary for her. The daughter of an Irish Anglican clergyman, Bronnie was herself an Anglican. In a letter to her publisher, she claims to love the Church of England. Her ministers, indeed, I do not regard as infallible personages, I have seen too much of them for the but to the establishment, with all her faults, the profane Athanasian creed excluded, I am sincerely attached. In a letter to Ellen Nussie she wrote, Elizabeth Gaskell's biography The Life of Charlotte Bronte was published in 1857. It was an important step for a leading female novelist to write a biography of another, and Gaskell's approach was unusual in that, 
rather than analyzing her subject's achievements, she concentrated on private details of Bronte's life, emphasizing those aspects that countered the accusations of coarseness that had been leveled at her writing. The biography is frank in places, but omits details of Bronte's love for Haga, a married man, as being too much of an affront to contemporary morals and a likely source of distress to Bronte's father, widower, and friends. Mrs. Gaskell also provided doubtful and inaccurate information about Patrick Bronte, claiming that he did not allow his children to eat meat. This is refuted by one of Emily Bronte's diary papers, in which she describes preparing meat and potatoes for dinner at the parsonage. It has been argued that Gaskell's approach transferred the focus of attention away from the difficult novels, not just Bronte's, but all the sisters, and began a process of sanctification of their private lives. On July 29, 1913 the Times of London printed four letters Bronte had written to Constantine Haga after leaving Brussels in 1844. Written in French except for one postscript in English, the letters broke the prevailing image of Bronte as an angelic martyr to Christian and female duties thought had been constructed by many biographers, beginning with Gaskell. The letters, which formed part of a larger and somewhat one-sided correspondence in which Haga frequently appears not to have replied, reveal that she had been in love with a married man, although they are complex and have been interpreted in numerous ways, including as an example of literary self-dramatization and an expression of gratitude from a former pupil. In 1980 a commemorative plaque was unveiled at the Center for Fine Arts, Brussels, Beaux-Arts, on the site of the Madame Haga School, in honor of Charlotte and Emily. In May 2017 the plaque was cleaned. The Green Dwarf, A Tale of the Perfect Tense was written in 1833 under the pseudonym Lord Charles Albert Florian Wellesley. It shows the influence of Walter Scott, and Bronte's modifications to her earlier Gothic style have led Christine Alexander to comment that, in the work, it is clear that Bronte was becoming tired of the Gothic mode per se. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.